The next air war won't be won by the most advanced fighter jet. It'll be won by the one that can take off. Meet the F-30 Fussive Lightning II, a technological marvel of stealth and sensors, with a total program cost that makes it one of the most expensive weapon systems in history. It's supposed to be the undisputed king of the skies, but it has a fatal flaw. It's a sitting duck trapped on massive, vulnerable air bases that are the first targets in any major conflict. Any damage to its pristine runway, and it's grounded. But while the F-35 is stranded on a burning tarmac, a Swedish street fighter is taking off from a simple forest road, ready to win the war. This is a tale of two jets, built on two totally opposing ideas of what it means to survive. So, let's start with the F-35. And make no mistake, this thing is a technological titan. It was designed to be the apex predator of the skies, a first day of war weapon that kicks down the door of the most heavily defended airspace on the planet. Its primary survival tool is stealth. Its philosophy is simple, kill the enemy before they even know you're there. And its stealth is legendary, with a radar cross-section that some whisper is as small as a golf ball. We know the F-35 is the smartest plane in the sky. Its sensors see everything, but all that brain power is useless if the plane is stuck on the ground. But this incredible power comes at a staggering price. The F-35 is a high-maintenance machine. Its advanced stealth coating, baked right into the jet's skin, is sensitive. To keep it in ghost mode, it needs meticulous care and protected hangers. A significant scratch isn't just cosmetic. It can turn a ghost into a target. This dependency runs deep. The jet is tethered to a massive, complex digital brain, once called ALIS, now being upgraded to ODIN, to manage everything from mission planning to maintenance. This system is the jet's nerve center, but it's a nerve center that needs a secure, stable, and fully functioning airbase to operate. And there's the F-35's Achilles heel. Those large, pristine, and very obvious airbases are target number one on the first day of a war. Long-range missiles don't need to destroy the F-35s themselves. They just need to crater the runways, demolish the specialized hangars, and sever the connection to the digital network. A fighter jet with a nine-figure price tag is worthless if it can't take off or be properly maintained. Making matters worse, the F-35 has been wrestling with readiness issues. While rates are improving, recently hovering around 60% to 65% for some variants, that still means a huge chunk of the fleet isn't mission capable at any given time. In a war of attrition, an aircraft that spends that much time on the ground is a serious liability. Now, let's meet the Challenger, the Saab Gripen E. The Gripen wasn't designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the F-35 on its own terms. It was designed to survive in a world where the F-35's ideal conditions have been completely destroyed. If the F-35 is a thoroughbred racehorse that needs a perfect track, the Gripen is a rally car built to win on any terrain. Its design philosophy was born from Sweden's Cold War doctrine, which knew its air bases would be obliterated in a conflict. The answer was dispersed operations. The Gripen was engineered from the ground up to operate from almost anywhere, capable of using runways as short as 800 meters in a pinch. This means public highways, rural roads, and tiny airfields all become potential hornet's nests. This isn't just a party trick, it's central to its entire operational concept. While other air forces might practice highway landings as a novelty for grip and pilots, it's a core competency. This immediately presents a solution to the F-35's biggest problem. How can an enemy possibly target hundreds of potential landing strips scattered across a country? The Gripen becomes almost impossible to pin down. This philosophy of rugged independence carries over to its maintenance. Where the F-35 needs a vast logistical tail, the Gripen is a mechanic's dream. It was designed for easy maintenance in tough conditions. A full air-to-air -air turnaround, refueling and rearming can be done in 10 to 20 minutes by a small ground crew with minimal gear. Its engine? It can be fully swapped out in the field in about an hour or two. This means the Gripen can generate sorties at a blistering pace. While an F-35 squadron might struggle with availability, a Gripen squadron can keep its jets in the air, returning to the fight again and again. It's built for a high tempo, attritional war, 
A war where the number of planes you can get in the sky matters more than the theoretical perfection of a single jet. So, what happens when these two radically different fighters meet in the sky? It's a collision of two opposing doctrines, stealth versus electronic warfare. The F-35's first line of defense is hiding, but the Gripen E operates on the assumption that it will be detected and is built to dominate the electromagnetic spectrum. Instead of hiding, it blinds and deafens its opponents. Think of it like a flashlight in a dark room. The F-35 tries to stay in the shadows. The Gripen shines a 10 million candle power spotlight directly into the enemy's eyes. It doesn't hide. It screams so loud electronically that the enemy radar goes blind. And the F-35 stealth? It's conditional. It relies on carrying its weapons internally. If a mission demands a heavy payload, it has to use external hardpoints, which dramatically increases its radar signature and basically turns off its primary advantage. The Gripen E, with its 10 external hardpoints, carries everything externally by design, with no penalty to its core survival strategy. In a beyond visual range engagement, that's where the fight gets really interesting. The F-35 has incredible sensor fusion, but so does the Gripen. Swedish engineers have been perfecting this since the days of the Viggen, and the Gripen E's system is designed to give the pilot maximum awareness with minimum workload. And here is the Gripen's dirty secret, the Meteor missile. The American AMRAM runs out of fuel and coasts to its target. The European Meteor has a ramjet engine. It accelerates all the way to impact. In a head-on shot, the cheap Gripen might actually outrange the F-35. And then there's the brutal math of readiness. Previous Gripen versions have boasted incredible availability rates, often north of 85%, and the Gripen E is designed to continue that legacy. The ability to generate three, four, or even five flights per day from a single jet creates a cumulative combat power that could overwhelm an opponent who can only fly their more advanced jet once, if it's even available. This isn't to say the Grapen is better in every situation. In war games designed to test capabilities against modern threats, the F-35 has scored incredibly well, especially in mission performance. But those exercises often assume perfect operating conditions, the very conditions that are the first to disappear when war breaks out. So, which jet survives the next air war, the F-35 or the Gripen E? The truth is that's the wrong question. It assumes a war will be won by a single weapon, a single philosophy. Modern warfare is all about adaptability. The F-35 remains the undisputed champion of the first kick. It is the deep strike platform designed to penetrate the most formidable defenses and take out high value targets when a conflict begins. Its stealth and sensors are tools no other aircraft can truly match. But what happens on day two? What happens when the runways are rubble, the supply chains are broken, and the war becomes a grueling battle of attrition? That is where the Gripen E thrives. It is the survivor, the street fighter that keeps the fight going from a forest road rearming in minutes and rising again and again. The ultimate victor in a future air war won't be the air force that chooses one over the other, but the one that understands how to use both. It will require a two-pronged sword, the F-35's ability to create the initial breach, and the Gripen's resilient, high-tempo power to endure the long fight that follows. The winner isn't the jet, but the strategy. But what do you think? Is the future of air combat all about stealth, or is rugged dispersal the key to victory? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy in-depth analysis of military tech, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update.